So the way you leapfrog, right, is uh, you come up with an idea or you take a direction, perhaps secretly, that the other people aren't taking. And so Cruz, Waymo, even uh, Aurora. I don't know Aurora. Zooks is the same stack as well. They're yep. all the same code base even. And they're, they're all the same DARPA Urban yeah. Challenge code base. It's, uh, so th the question is, do you think there's a room for brilliance and innovation there that will change everything? Like say, okay, so I'll give you examples. Um, it, it could be if a revolution in mapping, for example, that allow you to map things, do HD maps of the whole world, all weather conditions somehow really well, or uh, revolution in simulation. Well, to, to where the, all the, the, what you said before becomes incorrect. That kind of thing. Uh, Any room for breakthrough innovation? Um, what I said before about, oh, they actually get the whole thing. Well, I'll, I'll say this about, uh, we divide driving into three problems. And I actually haven't solved the third yet, but I have an idea how to do it. So there's the static. The static driving problem is assuming you are the only car on the road. Right. right? And this problem can be solved 100% with mapping and localization. Yeah. This is why farms work the way they do. If all you have to deal with is the static problem, and you can statically schedule your machines, right? It's the same as like statically scheduling uh, processes. You can statically schedule your tractors to never hit each other on their paths, right? Because they you know the speed they go at. So, so that's the static driving problem. Maps only helps you with the static driving problem. Yeah. The question about static driving. Yeah. You just made it sound like it's really easy. Static driving is really easy. How easy? How hard, well, because the whole drifting out of lane, when, when Tesla drifts out of lane, it's failing on the fundamental static driving problem. Tesla is drifting out of lane. The static driving problem is not easy for the world. The static driving problem is easy for one route. One route in one weather condition with one state of lane markings and like, no deterioration, well, no cracks in the road. No, I'm assuming you have a perfect localizer. So that's solved for the weather condition and the, the lane marking condition. But that's the problem. Is how, could you, how do you have a perfect You can localizer? build... Perfect localizers are not that hard to build. Okay, come on now. With, 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 with LiDAR. With LiDAR, yeah. Or with LiDAR, okay. With LiDAR, yeah. But you use LiDAR, right? Like, use LiDAR, build a perfect localizer. Building a perfect localizer without LiDAR... <sighs> It's gonna be it's gonna be hard. You can get ten centimeters without lidar. You can get one centimeter with lidar. I'm not but, even concerned about the one or ten centimeters. I'm concerned if every once in a while you're just way off. Yeah. So this is stuff. why you have to carefully make sure you're always tracking your position. You want to use lidar camera fusion, but you can get the reliability of that system yeah. up to hundred thousand miles and then you write some fallback condition where it's not that bad if you're way off right i think that you can get it to the point it's like azle d that you're you're never in a case where you're way off and you don't know it yeah okay um, so this is brilliant so that's the static static we can especially with lidar and good hd maps you can solve that problem easy no, I easy. just disagree no, it's with so, your word the word easy. Static, the static, the static problem is so it's easy. very typical okay. for you to say something is easy. I got it. It's now. not as challenging as the other ones. Okay. Well, it's, it's okay. Maybe it's obvious how to solve it. The third one's the hardest. Yeah. Well, where do we get? And a lot of people don't even think about the third one oh, and boy. even see it as different from the second one. So the second one is dynamic. The second one is like, say there's a, an obvious example. It's like a car stopped at a red light, right? You can't have that car in your map. Yeah. Because you don't know whether that car is going to be there or not. So you have to detect that car in real time. And then you have to, you know, do the appropriate action, right? Also, that car is not a fixed object. That car may move and you have to predict what that car will do, mm -hmm. right? So this is the dynamic problem. Yeah. So you have to deal with this. Um, this involves, again, like you're going to need models of other people's behavior. Do you, are you including in that? I, I don't want to step on on the third one, oh. but are, <laughs> are, are you including in that your influence on people? Ah, uh, that's the third one. Okay. That's the third yeah. one. We call it the counterfactual. Yeah. And brilliant. that. I just talked to Judea Pearl, who's obsessed with counterfactuals. Counterfactual. Oh yeah, yeah, I read his books. Um, <laughs> so the static and the dynamic, yeah. our, our approach right now for lateral will scale completely to the static and dynamic.
The counterfactual, the only way I have to do it yet, the, 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 the thing that I want to do once we have all of these cars is I want to do reinforcement learning on the world. I'm always going to turn the exploiter up to max. I'm not going to have them explore. But the only real way to get at the counterfactual is to do reinforcement learning because the other agents are humans.